This is a strength of materials problem, and we're going to be working with axial loading and Poisson's ratio. The problem goes as follows. The short cylindrical block, this one right here, is made of aluminum, and it has an original diameter of half an inch and a length of one and a half an inch. It's placed inside the between the jaws of this vise, and it's squeezed until the axial load on it will be 800 pounds. They want us to determine the decrease in its length and the change in its diameter. First of all, let's take a look at what kind of material we have here. Well, the I mean the shape of it. It's a cylinder with a diameter and a length that's given. So, when we're going to apply this 800 pound load to it, what's going to happen? It's going to shrink, right? So, it's going to, from this length, it's going to shrink down to this length, right here. So, this will be the change in its length, right? We can mark it as uh, theta. Now, we also know that it has a diameter, which, uh, let me mark it right here. This will be the diameter, and this will also change as as this one changes. The diameter will also change. This is uh, we know from Poisson's ratio, and what else we know? It's the original length. We're gonna call it L. All right. These are all the uh, information that is given to us. So let's get started. In order to find the deformation. In, uh, in its length, we can see that this is a simple axial loading situation, so therefore we're going to use the deformation due to axial loading formula. I'm going to write it up, plug it in, and find the values, find the value. I went ahead, plugged in the values that we have. We know the force, the length, the Young's modulus is also given, and then the area. The area is a circular, it's a piece of a rod, therefore pi over 4 times uh, 0.5 inches over on the square. And with a calculator we can find the value. This is the answer to our part A. Now in part B they want us to find the change in the diameter after this uh, change in length occurred. Now if we look, we can see that we have nu given, which is uh, Poisson's ratio, as 0 0.35, 0 0.35, and here's the Poisson's ratio formula, where nu equals the negative of the strain in the lateral direction over the strain in the longitudinal direction. And this is what we're going to use to help us find the change in diameter. When I'm going to plug into Poisson's ratio, I'm going to also use the normal strain formula, which is strain equals the deformation over the original length. I'm going to go ahead, take this formula, plug it in at the top, and plug it in at the bottom of Poisson's ratios formula. Okay, here it is. I plugged it in, and as we can see, this is how it looks on top. When we have the strain in the lateral, we know that if we are pushing something together, the longitudinal length will decrease. This is a decrease in the length that we found over here, and therefore the diameter will increase. The opposite, if we pull something, its length will grow, and the, the diameter of it would shrink. So, I put here the decrease in diameter over the original diameter and in the bottom we have the longitudinal change which is the change in the length which we found here over the original length so well over here in point a i should either put a negative or at the end we could uh, say that this is a decrease in length just to be sure uh, that we are accurate with our explanation. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and solve for the change in diameter from this uh, equation and we're gonna find that the change in diameter is equal to the negative of the original diameter times the change in length times Poisson's ratio over the original length. Let's not lose this minus. Okay, now let's go ahead and plug in all the values that we have. All the values plugged in. Now, the negative from here stays. Original diameter 0 0.5, 0 0.5 inches. The change in length is, we found it right here. So, and it's since it's a decrease, we need to make sure that we put it in with a negative. Times new divided by original length, 1.5 inches. The calculator, go ahead, we can find the value. I rounded it to three significant figures and I wrote over here that it's an increase in diameter. And there you go, this would be the end of this problem.